In the 1970s, comic books were filled with advertisements for sea monkeys, the Charles Atlas bodybuilding course, and of course, lots of ads for x-ray glasses that supposedly gave the wearer the ability to see through clothing. That is pretty amazing technology for just one dollar, even back in the 1970s. It turns out the inventor of those glasses, Mr. Harold Braunhut, was issued a patent for those glasses, even though they never quite worked like the comic book ad suggested. In this video, I want to explore the question, what if those glasses, or a modern equivalent of them, really did allow users to look through the walls of your home or to see your naked body through your clothes? Would that technology be legal? I am Dr. John Padfield. I'm a business professor and a former Indiana State Representative. And this is Business Reform, where we discuss issues at the intersection of business, technology, and society. To the best of my knowledge, the closest technology that exists today that would allow someone to see through the walls of your home are thermal cameras. Thermal cameras can see how many warm bodies are in a house, what rooms they are in, and what they are doing without ever having to enter the house. However, in the 2001 Kylo case, the United States Supreme Court ruled in a 5-4 decision that law enforcement must obtain a search warrant to look inside a suspect's home with a thermal camera because the court determined any such surveillance to be a search governed by the Fourth Amendment. Although this is not a political channel, I do want to point out that of the five justices who voted in favor of upholding the Fourth Amendment and protecting our right to privacy, three of them, Justices Scalia, Souter, and Thomas, were appointed by Republican presidents, and two of them, Justices Ginsburg and Breyer, were appointed by Democrat presidents. Privacy is not and never should be a partisan issue. I am thankful that the court ruled in favor of the Fourth Amendment. I only wish that it had been a 9-0 decision. Even though this was a good ruling, it only applies to government and law enforcement who are constrained by the Fourth Amendment. Theoretically, if I purchased a thermal camera from Amazon for, say, $5,794, could I legally use it to look inside my neighbor's home? Or if the technology currently in use by TSA at airports around the United States were miniaturized so that it fit into a handheld camera or pair of glasses, could I sit on a park bench and watch people walk by? It may surprise you, but in most jurisdictions, the answer is probably yes. In the late 1990s, I helped write and pass the Indiana law that makes it illegal to video record anyone in a changing room, a locker room, a bathroom, or any other place that they have a, quote, reasonable expectation of privacy. But that law was only passed after several incidents where people such as unethical landlords had hidden small cameras inside of the bathrooms of houses that they were renting to tenants. The point is, technology always outpaces legislation. Let me say that again. Technology always outpaces legislation. And the reason for that is simple. Most people do not see a need to pass a law making it illegal to do something that is impossible. If it's impossible, it doesn't need to be illegal. However, with each passing day, technology is making new things possible. Things that were formerly impossible, or at least incredibly impractical, are now becoming both possible and practical, and laws need to be passed to prevent that technology from being abused and violating people's rights. In the 1990s, the big issue was video cameras were shrinking at an incredibly fast pace. What used to be a shoulder-mounted camera became a handheld camera, became a pocket camera. The fact that the cameras were shrinking made things possible and it required laws to be passed to prevent the technology from being misused. Today, what we're seeing is the rise of surveillance capitalism. Companies are finding new ways to exploit people, to capture their data, and to do things with that data that is not in the best interest of consumers. Today, there are no laws against many of the things that are being done, not because the things are good, but because technology, once again, has outpaced legislation. 
The latest example is Ford Motor Company, who just filed for a patent to turn all of its new cars into mobile speed cameras for law enforcement. That way, when you are driving your car, wait, I said that wrong. When you are driving their car that you paid for and insured but don't truly own in the traditional sense of the word own, they can suck up the video from everything their onboard cameras see. That includes the driver, passengers, the inside of your garage, and every vehicle you pass or who passes you on the road. And believe me, we will talk a lot more about this in future videos. I am currently doing some research focused on automotive data harvesting and telematics in preparation for my presentation at the Electronic Frontiers Forum track at DragonCon in Atlanta this Labor Day weekend and I will be creating some new videos based on what I am finding in this research. If you are going to be in the Atlanta area this Labor Day weekend, feel free to send me a message via LinkedIn. My profile is linked in the description of this video. And speaking of this video, if you enjoyed it, please give it a like, and also please share it with anyone that you know that may be interested in it. Also, please subscribe, and as always, thank you for watching.